Right, good morning everybody and welcome back to Thai Talk with Dan, the channel where we share all of your Thailand stories. Now for a long time we've all been baffled by the stories that we've heard on this channel. Some are really unbelievable because you can't imagine guys walking into the fire the way that they do. But love or lust can be a crazy motivator and a lot of these guys do have their eyes wide open but just can't stop themselves. It's like they're under a magic spell. I put a spell on you and now you're mine. And the worst place in Thailand to fall in love is in Pattaya. And this next subscriber didn't fall in love with a Thai woman. He fell in love with someone from Uzbekistan. Get ready for today's crazy Thailand story. Hi Dan, I want to tell you my story. One among many. It's about a girl from Uzbekistan I met in Pattaya. Yes, not Thai, but still an escort and I'm Italian. I am in love with her and I know very well that she deceived me. Like all of us, I want to believe that these women have feelings for us. I want to find justifications, but my rational side knows that I I'm an idiot. Stupid is stupid does, Miss Blue. I met this girl on Beach Road. Beautiful, Uzbek, but with Russian features. She is part of a group that stays at the corner of Walking Street. We spent 48 hours together. She was kind, sweet, and cried when we parted ways as I had to leave. She asked me for my number, saying she would call me, and she did. Three to four times per week. I liked her, so I went back to Pattaya after a month and we spent eight days together where I did not pay her. I told her I would bring her to Italy and give her 100,000 baht per month for the next two months if she stopped working, waiting for her visa. Now in the meantime, to make sure she wasn't working, I watched the videos from Beach Road. Unfortunately, I saw her there again, in the exact same spot. I asked her, and she said she was just accompanying a friend. So I created a fake WhatsApp number, requested a short time at my hotel with a false name, and she responded. I revealed the game, and she told me that it wasn't for her, but she was always finding clients for her friend. I gave her money, 100,000 baht, back in June. But in mid-June, she said she wanted to return to Uzbekistan because it didn't make sense to stay in Pattaya without working. She asked for money for the flight, for her and her friend, so, I gave it her. She returned to her country and started asking me for money for her house, for herself, to help her daughter, for an Italian course, for the gym, or because she had nothing to eat, etc. Every Monday, we had video calls, a nice little show with maybe some virtual fun, and then the next day, she would ask for money. That's how it works. In two months, 2,500 euros. I agreed, telling her I would visit her in August for the visa. That's what happened. I left for Uzbekistan. On the first day together in Tashkent, I looked through her phone. Stupid of her, her passcode was... Zero, 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 zero. I found compromising photos of men that she had been with in Uzbekistan. 
In my opinion, she denied it. I found strange messages asking for money from relatives for Jafar in prison. She claimed Jafar was her brother imprisoned in Russia and that the others were friends. I also saw, up until the day before, continuous calls to some guy. So I played along. We went to the embassy and I processed the visa. It's very difficult to get a visa for Uzbeks to enter Europe. She introduced me to her family, friends and everything was perfect. Meanwhile, I contacted the guy who told me he had been her boyfriend for a year and a half and that they had recently broken up. They had aerobics until the week before. The problem was that this guy wasn't the same as the one in the compromising photos. The guy told me that Jafar was actually her husband, the father of her child, and that he would soon be released from prison. He said she does everything for him and warned me not to trust her because he had been scammed too. When he refused to give her money, she dumped him for me. So, I asked her for explanations. She insisted Jafar was her brother and even her mother lied, saying Jafar was her son. Nothing made sense, but I was in love. She took me to a ceremony in a mosque, saying it was a kind of lifelong bond and fidelity pledge. In August, she come to Italy. She didn't ask me for money, in the meantime, and acted like the perfect wife. I must say, however, the aerobics was scarce and she constantly wanted unprotected aerobics. I'm not entirely foolish and I always pretended to finish outside. She was bored, didn't want to learn Italian, never went out and was always chatting with friends. I found another message in which a friend said Jafar was waiting for her and she responded by saying she needed to hold on for another year and a half, while in the meantime, she and her mother were buying a house in Bukhara. She then changed her phone's pin and asked me for 300 euros for her daughter. I gave her the money, but unfortunately, she used her birthday as the new pin. I read that part of that money went to Jafar. This brings us to the end of the story, which happened just a few days ago. After 20 days, she asked me for 1,000 euros a month for debts to a criminal escort organization. When I refused, she made a scene and said she would leave again to earn the money herself. We made peace and I told her I could only give her up to 700 euros and she agreed. I needed to extend her visa, which can only be done by a sort of civil marriage. I decided that we could do it, as it would give her a two-year visa. However, we needed a family certificate from Uzbekistan stating that she was single. We requested it from Uzbek Embassy, but it hasn't arrived yet. She was clearly very happy to get married. Meanwhile, remembering everything and thanks to your channel, I know very well that I have been scammed. But the problem is, I love her. I enjoy being with her. She is beautiful, sweet, and I still think maybe she really did need to help her family. Last Saturday morning, I decided to check her phone again. I found a conversation with a friend where she said she was working in Italy for old people. I am 47 and she is 28 and that she was waiting for her husband's release from a Russian prison. 
the 700 euros had already ruined our relationship, but I was holding on. I earn 2,500 euros a month, so that money is a lot for me. After reading that, I woke her up, booked her a flight, and sent her off to the airport. She landed in Turkey, where she still is now with some friends. She calls me and texts me, saying she loves me and she isn't working. Unfortunately, I still love her and feel terrible every night. I know that the entire course of events is a scam and that she is probably working in Turkey and that for her, I am just a paying client to keep on a leash. But she lies so well that I can't fully let her go. Writing these words, however, is helping me. Thank you, Marco. Guys, it's a good example, this, to share with you, to make you understand that guys are willing to do whatever it takes to keep that woman that they're obsessed with, in love with, in lust with, want to own, whatever you want to call it, guys. Um, they want to keep that woman, and they're not bothered. At the end of the day, most of these guys understand and realize that they're not going to get a woman that young or that beautiful or that sexy, etc., back home yeah so they just stick with it and if they've got the money in the pocket to keep feeding that woman then they'll just keep feeding her and they'll keep going and going and going until that woman leaves them or they end up broke and they have arguments and that woman leaves them anyway i mean it's a disaster just waiting to happen i mean i know a lot of guys that watch this channel are a lot older so you won't be interested in a platform called tiktok I'm not really interested in it. But the one thing that I do like about TikTok is that um, Thai and foreign couples um, are constantly on there. Big age differences, um, not just age difference, like mentality difference, just big differences. Like it, it's hard to explain. You can just see like everything is about money. And the guys are that loved up and that hypnotized. You know, they, they just don't want to lose what they've got. They don't care. They put it to the back of their mind that they're being used and abused um, because that woman is making everything worthwhile. Now, I've asked this question to quite a few people. I'm going to ask it to everybody on here. Imagine right now that there are no more females on the planet, right? So all the females have disappeared and you're not gay, yeah? So literally, there's no one for you. The best that you can get is a best friend, companionship, whatever, yeah? Uh, but you're not gay, so you can't do anything, you know, like that. So all the women have gone. What would you do? Would you be depressed? Would you be down? Would you get dressed in the morning? Would you get up? Would you have a shave? Would you care about going to the gym? You know, um, how would you live your life? I'd love for guys to be super, super honest and put their comments down below and tell the truth. I'm sure a lot of guys would just give up. What's the point? Um, so the reason why I'm mentioning that is that I want people to try to understand how lost and lonely and desperate these guys are. Doesn't mean they're bad people. They're just stuck in a rut and it's hard to get them out. Anything I say or you say, not necessarily going to wake them up, but at least that information is available online if they want it, you know? If they need some advice, they need some help, they need to know that other guys are going through a similar situation, they need to know that other guys have managed to get out of the situation that they're in, and then they know that they can get out of it and that there is a future, there is another woman. There's so many women on this planet, and especially here in Thailand, why would you wanna be with an alcoholic, a freelancer, someone that doesn't respect you, someone that you can't trust. What's the point of giving yourself that headache? There are plenty of women that 
you can get where you don't have that headache and you just have the fun times. When you get with a woman, that woman is supposed to better your life, yeah? You know, not make it worse, not make you stress, not make you not sleep at night, not drain your bank account, not make you feel guilty with sob stories of this and that. That's not paradise, Thailand paradise. Come on, guys. Guys just need to have a little bit more self-respect um, and value themselves a lot more um, and don't feel like just because you're not like super handsome or super athletic or whatever, you know, that nobody wants you. It doesn't work like that over here in Asia. You know, most of them are interested in your personality. So if you're a nice person inside, you've got a chance of being with a, a good looking woman as long as she's a nice person inside too. Right guys, if you've got your own Thailand story and you want to share it on the channel, then as always, get your email sent in to thaitalkwithdan at gmail.com. Guys, in regards to me, um, I've tried to stay quiet over the last few days, um, trying to make myself better. My breathing's improved a lot, but I am tired after uh, speaking a lot on this video. I need to get some water, um, warm water, guys. Don't worry, I'm not drinking cold. I'm being very careful with what I'm eating and drinking. I'm doing my best to try to get better as much as possible. But guys, I'm, 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 I've improved a lot, a hell of a lot. I just feel tired all the time. That's the only problem, but I think that's expected. I mean, I did go through a lot. I, I was very ill. My lungs were seriously messed up. Um, got to go back to the doctors now on the second, and I think that's when I'll get all my answers properly uh, on the second, um, because I think I'm there all day. So I know there's a lot to do on that day. Um, and I've got to get new medication and stuff. So I should have a good chat to someone then. Um, apart from that, guys, like, I've, like I said last time, thank you for your support. Thanks for your help. We all get stuck in a rut. We all mess up sometimes, but we have to learn from those mistakes. And I am learning right now. You know, my focus is to make sure that I've got savings in my account for any future emergencies. And also I'm in talks now with insurance companies uh, to sort out insurance. So I'm covered um, if I get more sick. But the only problem is, is because I've just recently been sick, it's not as simple and straightforward. So it's a bit more hard work, but we'll get there. Um, and hopefully it'll be boxed off and sorted out soon. And I'll never miss a payment. Apart from that, guys, if you're vaping, stop vaping. It's more dangerous than you realize. And like people have said, it's illegal here for a reason, you know? They're not getting checked what's going inside because it's illegal, so they can do what they want. So be careful with the vaping, guys. Um, and don't take the risk. If you've been healthy all your life and you don't normally get sick, guys, we all get sick eventually. Something can happen, get hit by a bus, have a, a motorbike accident, a car accident. You need that insurance. Otherwise, you know, you can be in very, very big trouble. So hopefully, What's happened to me can wake some people up and save them a, a massive headache, a lot of heartache and a lot of money. Take it easy, guys. Take care of yourselves and ciao for now. Bye-bye.